the Comic Station, issue number 48 for November 27, 2013. I'm Paul Nisi from Fun Toward Gamer. And I'm Fox. And we are down a member, Echo, and we thought about a little trying to make up for it with a little uh, bikini <laughs> shoot, but none of them would fit me right, so we decided to get that off. Yeah, well we have a smaller person here with us. I mean, he's kind of filling in. Yes, uh, if you're going to have any third member of the... <laughs> cast going on here, you might as well have the doctor, uh, number 10, Tenet. Uh, obviously last issue we said, and the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who came up, so what better to have than Tenet, who is actually in the movie. Amazing movie, by the way. But this is a, I wouldn't say exactly a bust, because it goes down a little lower, but really nice details, the eyes are really nice, of course he has his, uh, He's Sonic almost screwdriver. Realistic. Almost. Almost. <laughs> a little hefty. Again, it's not a full figure, so no. but it is nice and hefty, so we thought we would have an honorary third member. And it's the doctor. <laughs> um, for this week we have a Deadpool annual. So this is meant to answer some questions that some people may have had. Um it features uh, Madcap, and it tells why Madcap and Deadpool were fused together, and why they were how they were torn apart. Um, little fun thing in here, you get to see Thor and Luke Cage dancing together. That's um, cute. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Of course, you're gonna get humor with this. It's Deadpool. Of course. So, um, it's a necessary read for any Deadpool fans. I've been loving this comic. It's it is on my pull list. And actually, a new comic. This is Quest from Zenoscope. Grim Fairy Tales uh, tie in as well. This is part of their Mist Land, where it's a brand new story, but it's, it's kind of starts off like a joke. Uh, an egotistic realm knight, a drunkard dwarf, and a warrior princess walk into a bar. Hmm. So, but. Eventually, you find out that they are on a quest to reunite some lost relics and save the realm of mist from the evil Dark One. And it is basically, it is essentially a homage to D and D, the epic quest, the uh, searching. Which is why I want to read that one. Yes, uh, really great artwork, and it has a really good classic adventure feel. And there is a little self-referential to the D&D &D where uh, at one point one of the characters just basically goes, all we do is walk around. We just keep going to one place and then they send us to another place to get another thing, to get another thing. It's like, yeah, it's, it's aware of what Part it's of doing. Part of quest. <laughs> it, it's what happens. But uh, I did talk to the author before and Quest obviously has a number of meanings, but not only are they on a quest, but they're on a personal quest as well. So they all have their own issues that will come out. Sandman Overture Special Edition. Um, this one. We did do the did Sandman the Overture. Right. This uh, one is. I don't know if the other one was in black and white. Mm -hmm. but this one is in black and white um, before they color it. And it has a bunch of extra features in it um, in addition to the story. Like, um, they have an explanation of the process leading to uh, translucent, translucent lettering. Um, and there's some annotations by the author and some interviews and some really nice additions and we wanted to obviously do this for Echo because we miss her. Yes. <laughs> so. The next one we have is from Image Comics is Black Science and this is, there's always a p kind of a darker side to science and uh, what happens when scientists believe that they can go beyond nature is black science and first thing you will notice as soon as you open the page is the stunning artwork in this. If anything, the artwork is really just the feature of this comic book. And the story is really interesting. There's a little bit of dimension hopping going on and the story is told really well and there's a lot of action. It is not too story heavy, but there's a lot of action. It just really flows really well. Another Cataclysm, uh, this one is for the X-Men. This one, since you already know the general reason for Cataclysm is that Galactus is going to 
come and try to take over the world, eat it, whatever he does. Um, here we have Jimmy Hudson, Rogue Iceman, Black Heath, Storm, Mach 2, Silence, Strong Guy, Amp, Beak, Pixie, and Captain Marvel. Uh -huh. That's who's in here. It's a lot, but it's good. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of characters, <laughs> a lot in, that of characters in that one. So. And the last one I have is from Dark Horse Comics. This is Never Ending, number one of three. And it really just reminds me of the quote from the Fallout series, War. War never changes. And it kind of opens exactly like that, where nothing ever changes. He got his powers. This, this is a little bit of a time-jumping tale of how main character Chuck got his powers. He became a superhero. And the events that came about, he became a superhero, he became a father, and then he lost it all. And he's just kind of tired. Uh, kind of like Superman, where he doesn't seem to age the same rate. So, he's lost everything. So he's just kind of, he's ready for everything to end. And he kind of gets the feeling that the villains are around because he's a superhero and so forth. So it's a real, it's an interesting idea behind it, and I did like it. The artwork was nice. Um, I wouldn't say anything amazing. It does have that kind of uh, computer-generated graphics, but nothing wrong with that nowadays. So, but I like the story. I like the idea of what happens when the superhero is just tired of being a superhero. And a bonus issue. It's bonus. not a number one, but it has Spider Girl in it, so, so. obviously <laughs> I want to tell you about it. Uh, it's the first time in a while that Anya Corazon has been back, um, and she is teaming up with Spider Woman and Black Widow. So you might want to pick this up if you're a fan of any of them. Which oh, you yeah. should be. You should be. Because it's teeny. Alright. Uh, coming up next, we have a few reviews, but first, a commercial. I love you. I love you very much, Nightcrawler. Hey, we got mail today. Oh, awesome. What did we get? What did we get? Uh huh. Here's yours. And um, this one's cool. Oh. Awesome package. Very cool. From, from Monstrous. Monstrous Apparel, they are our New Jersey it's local it's friends. Awesome. I got a t-shirt. Awesome. Looks like it is the Jersey Devil with nipple rings. He's a kinky guy. Yay, thank you. <laughs> thank you guys so nice much. Guys. And you gave us both a comic and some stickers. Especially love this New Jersey zombie nice. brains one is... Totally cool. Thank you guys so much. And um, our friends over at Monsters Power were generous enough to also donate an extra prize pack. So if you guys would like a prize pack as well, uh, comment on the video below and let us know what your favorite horror or even New Jersey horror themed character is and why you like them so much. So don't forget to check out MonstersApparel.com. Thank you. Thanks. Hope you liked our new commercial from Monstrous. Obviously, I am wearing one of their shirts. I really like this. this is the Kraken. It has a whole bunch of nice references to all the different things from uh, some classic mythology in here. But we have our reviews this week. First off is Baltimore number Volume 3. This is A Passing Stranger and Other Stories. This is a collection of three very short vignettes and two slightly longer stories. Uh, one bag egg does not weigh down the rest. The Lovecraftian hero Lord Baltimore thrives amidst the gothic science mutations. Lord Baltimore kind of hunts vampires, and it's really well done, and Lita really enjoyed this. Mm. Keeping on the theme for BPRD theme of the world, this is BPRD number 113. The dark morose tones drowns out the fun. Uh, it's not just kind of repugnant and the main character follows along it's you kind of cheer her on in one of her worst moments she's a repugnant heroine who's more villain than anything and in especially her epiphany scene uh, Lero leaves Mignola to his dark past and he'd rather look forward to something a little lighthearted 
So Mignola's maybe uh, spending a little too t long in the dark. We have Dark Horse Presents number 30. To paraphrase Lido, uh, all of the good stories showcase unique and well-drawn stories. Um, the entire comic runs the gambit of artistic styles. A few notable clunky stories, but overall many more enjoyable new uh, and some turnaround stories. So this is an anthology. Uh, to quote Lito again, the good stories are all highly imaginative with cool concepts that are well worth the exploration. Yeah, I really like uh, Dark Horse Presents because the anthologies sometimes they'll actually shoot them off and give them their own titles. So it's a good way to scope out some possible new titles. Unfortunately, we're going to leave on a low note here, is The Strain, The Fall, number 5. This is a comic adaptation of a novel, and these d vampires, they're either more monstrous vampires, or the art is just that bad. The translation from the novel to the comic really left a lot of literary jumps from one artistic to the next, and you don't, can't really follow it too well on some panels. The character actions really leave a question as to what impact they're having on the world. Is anything actually progressing? That was our reviews this week. Hope you liked the commercial, liked our new format, changing up the little uh, locations a little bit. Uh, make sure you check out Monstrous Definitely. Apparel, monstrousapparel.com. Uh, really cool shirts, really nice guys. Really like working with them. And hopefully next week we will see you again, and we will be back with echo next time yes have a happy thanksgiving Bye. happy thanksgiving stay safe and especially stay safe on black friday if you're going to go out into that madness so don't forget to hit your comic book stores over the weekend some of them are running sales as well thank you and we will see you next week